the Lions of Loyola Marymount against the Michigan Wolverines. And Ramil has to be the decision maker more than anybody else on our ball club. We don't want Loy Vaught and Terry Mills and Griffin handling the ball three quarters of the court in, in a transition situation. So it's Ramil number one that we want with the ball. Now he has to decide when do I push and when do I pull. Rumiel Robinson in charge of the Michigan attack. Quinn, that's nothing new. No, it is nothing new. Last year, he handled the attack well enough to get him to the national championship. This afternoon, what he's really got to do is protect it from turnovers on the press one and then successful transition. Knowing rebounds and unquestionably the leader on that side of the floor. Well, Greg, it was as good a performance as I've seen. He got 35 points after having four fouls with seven minutes to go in the first half. I mean, that's what really impressed me the most. But you could see his leadership carried over into the entire team. They just played harder and harder once he started getting on track. The best offense in the nation against the defending NCAA champions, the Loyola Marymount Lions and the Michigan Wolverines. A men's basketball tournament. Today's game features the Loyola Marymount Lions and the Michigan Wolverines. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Loyola Marymount, at forward, a 6'5 senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 30, Bo Kimball. For Michigan, at forward, a 6'9 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 35, Roy Vaught. For Loyola Marymount, at forward, a 6'7 junior from Sodertalja, Sweden, number four, Per Steamer. For Michigan, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Rosemont, Illinois, number 20, Mike Griffin. For the Lions, at center, a 6'10 sophomore from Los Angeles, number 34, Chris Knight. For the Wolverines, at center, a 6'10 senior from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. For Loyola Marymount, at guard, a 6'1 junior from Riverside, number 12, Tony Walker. For Michigan, at guard, a 6'1 junior from Flint, Michigan, number 13, Demetrius Taylor. For Loyola Marymount, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Newport Beach, number 21, Jeff Fryer. For Michigan, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 21, Ramil Robinson. And introducing the head coaches for Loyola Marymount in his fifth season with the Lions, Paul Westhead. And for Michigan, in his first full season with the Wolverines, Steve Fisher. But the, the full out 40 minutes of run in Michigan cannot do that. Certainly one of the big keys to this game will be to see just how well the big men of Michigan can keep up. Loyola Marymount ranked number 21 in the nation, 24 and 5 on the year. 13th ranked Michigan, 23 and 7. And it'll be Chris Knight in the dark jersey for Michigan. And the tip goes to Michigan and Pear Schemer with the foul on the attempted block. Well, that was a power tap <laughs> all the way for Lloyd Vaughn to just get there to get the ball up there. Steamer just got there late, but you can see Michigan coming out trying to assert their size and strength right here at the top. Here's Steve Fisher in his first full season. 6-0 last year, 23-7 this year. And Roy Vaught gets the Wolverines on the board first. Been a big player for him, Roy Vaught has. I thought he was a good player last year in the Big Ten. I think he's one of the outstanding uh, seniors coming out. Strong rebounds, and he's a very good shooter. Steve Fisher says the Wolverines have to rebound to stay in this game. Kimball grabs one there, and here come the Lions. Steamer is open for three. That Terry Mills trying to guard Steamer. That's going to be a real problem. Three point contest. 3-1, Loyola Marymount. Demetrius Caleb with the basketball dribbling through traffic. Here's Mike Griffin. But here's where you get in trouble, getting back on the transition. Griffin is the one who is to guard Bo Kimball today. And he is all over Bo Kimball down low. That matchup will be an interesting one, Greg, because Griffin works as hard as anybody on the defensive end. Pryor stripped of the ball by Rumiel Robinson. Oh, 
jumped out and took the foul on that one. What Michigan has done, interestingly enough, is they've gotten Demetrius Callup bring the ball up. It rests uh, Ramil Robinson from having to put up with the pressure that Loyola wants to put on. A couple of one-point games preceding us earlier. Shot out of the corner by Robinson is off. And Walker will push it, loses the ball. Griffin has it. Here comes Caleb. Caleb will put it up. Marymount's pace. Loose ball. Traveling violation. Traveling violation of Wilson Loyola Marymount. But the pace is Mary Loyola Marymount. And one of the things that we saw early is Ramil Robinson taking a quick jump shot from the corner. He sets the tempo. He cannot afford to take that shot because everybody else on Michigan feeds off of Ramil Robinson. Jeff Fryer out front. Knight across the lane. Whistle blows underneath. And the foul is on Mike Griffin. Mike Griffin trying to block Bo Kimball off the board where he grabbed 18 on Friday night. Well, you got to keep a body on him. I, I still contend Mike Griffin is the best person for that job. He's a role player on Michigan's team. He's the one guy that doesn't have to take shots to be an effective part of the Wolverines offense. And Mike Griffin, they're telling him to get up. I mean, Dan Clockery looked at him like, what are you doing? Get up. <laughs> Talk about setting some tempo. Here's Jeff Pryor out of the corner. It's a 6-3 Loyola Marymount lead early here in the first half, and Michigan comes back with a fast break bucket by number 35, Loy Vaughn. Just over 18 minutes to play. They've come back, Greg, but the tempo again is what Loyola Marymount wants. Chris Knight driving the lane is fouled, and he will go to the line to shoot two. There's Steve Fisher. He brings his Wolverines into Long Beach Arena here for second round play. The winner here moves on to Oakland, California to join Nevada, Las Vegas, and Ball State. And later on today, Arizona and Alabama will do battle to determine the same as Chris Boyd. Hits the short pop off the baseline. When Knight made that shot, but what I'm watching is that Paul Westhead has started to make Bo Kimball more of a decoy as opposed to going to him on the offensive end. Bo Kimball has set up the last two shots. Mills. Good shot by the big guy. 6'10", 240 pound Terry Mills. And it's 8'7", Loyola Marymount. Here's Kimball. And the ball will go over to Michigan. Friday night, Kimball got off to a slow start. But did he ever heat up in the second half? Yeah, and, and Greg, he got off to the slow start, and that was the reason Loyola Marymount got off to the slow start, and the reason they picked it up in the second half. Ramil Robinson fouled from behind by Tony Walker. Other games from around the regional, Southeast Regional, Northern Iowa, and Minnesota. Well, I, I know not many people expected Northern Iowa to be there. I want did not, but they're there, so they have as good a chance as anybody. Again, talking to the parody of the NCAA. Of course, Northern Iowa has one of the respected coaches in all of basketball, Eldon Miller. Eight-seven, Loyola Marymount. This is bought with Steamer on him, and Steamer is a physical player. Griffin. Steamer with the rebound. Here come the Lions. Kimball for three. The defense backed up. Found Bo Kimball at the three-point range. 11-7, Loyola Marymount by four. <laughs> On the break, Griffin missed everything. Here comes Kimball. He'll force it. Loose ball. Chris Knight lost it in the lane, and here comes Michigan. And that foul is on Kimball.
You pointed it out, Quinn. The pace is in favor of LMU. Oh, it absolutely is, Greg. They want to get it up and down. Michigan is trying to run with them. When Steve Fisher was talking about slowing the pace down, the tough part about it is when you've got people like Ramil Robinson, Terry Mills, Demetrius Callum, these guys, they, they can run because that's how they grew up. To try to all of a sudden take it out and then pick it up again is a very difficult thing to do. Six times in 30 games this season, Michigan has hit 100 or more points in a game with a high of 127 against Iowa. And that shot is good from outside by Terry Mills. Mills has four. Fryer outside, steamer for three. Comes up short, and here comes Michigan, three on one. Robinson, good pass to Mills. Mills has six. Steamer is open again. He's that one is off. Yeah, that one's off, but that's the shot they've got to make because Terry Mills will give Steamer that shot. Meanwhile, Vaught comes back for the short pop. That doesn't go, and we'll go the other way. Here's Steamer, another three. <laughs> you keep trying if you get the shot. <laughs> Steve Fisher wants his man to go out and cover Pierce Steamer. Defense always back up in transition, and they go protect the basket, and it's Terry Mills that was trying to guard uh, a pair of steamers, so steamers wide open because Mills is not getting back out in time. Three-point lead for Loyola Marymount. Here's a three-on-one advantage. Good bounce pass from Mills to Loy Vaughn. And LMU coming right back at you. Kimball, this is a two. Kimball for three. Nobody back on transition. And Roy Vaughn with the slam. Michigan by one. Vaughn has seven. Kimball in the lane, up the glass. And a traveling violation that will not count. We'll take a break. 14 57 to play. Michigan by one. And look at the tough games that have taken place today. Meanwhile, here in Long Beach, Michigan is running with Loyola Marymount. Well, the interesting thing is that I saw Demetrius Callop, who was the man with the ball, that giving it to Ramil Robinson where he can make the decision after the defense has been moved. You saw Terry Mills finish it off. One point Michigan lead and the full court press by Loyola Marymount. And they lose it. Lowry to Pryor. That's the pressure, full court press. Number 20, Terrell Lowry, into the game and makes an immediate impact. But back comes Michigan, two on one. Robinson almost lost it on his way up. Peabody, number 11, gives to Kimball, stripped of the basketball. Great defensive play. Caught it between his legs and got it back. Callie back, misses. Rebound, Michigan, no. Steamer has it. Jeff Fryer for three. Loyola Marymount's type of game. Number 14, Michael Talley, and number 24, Sean Higgins, in the lineup for Michigan. And Robinson slows it down. And Steve Fisher calls out a play from the sideline. And well, he should, Greg, because we talked about the big people inside of Michigan. You see right here, Bo Kimball trying to guard Terry Mills, but the tempo was clearly to the uh, point that Loyola Marymount was in good shape. Here, Steamer comes up big on the boards again for LMU, and back they come. Lowry for three. Peabody fighting the big guys inside, out of bounds to Loyola Marymount. Well, Steve Fisher disapproves. You see these guys are barely holding on to the ball with a 45-second clock. We don't need it today, Greg. <laughs> Despite Steve Fisher's protestations, the Lions will inbound the ball. 11 is Peabody, 30 is Kimball, 20, Terrell Lowry. Peabody's in the game. You know, he's. we call him the human bruise. He'll get down on the ground, get loose ball. Knight had, uh, Scott had a good game for him the other night. Just did everything. Rebound, shot him down. Pryor misses, out of bounds, and that belongs to Michigan. 31, Chris Scott is a 6'8 freshman who is helping fill the middle. He plays the Pank Gathers. 
Loyola Marymount is really struggling from the field as a rule, but they're shooting five from 11 from the three-point line, but they were only shooting like six for 12, I mean five for 13 a moment ago, so from the field period. You see Bo Kimball was, it needs a break, but I'm starting to see some of the Michigan players tire a little bit, and I see Steve Fisher made some good adjustments in that thing. Number 42, Eric Riley, a 6'11 freshman from Cleveland, is into the Michigan lineup. Pass inside, whistle blows. And that'll go against Loyola Marymount. Looks like it's on number 34. It is Chris Knight. I like the way Chris Knight walked away like it couldn't have been my foul. <laughs> Chris Knight, who took over the starting center position in place of Hank Gathers for Loyola Marymount, and doing very well. With this lineup Michigan has, and they... Demetrius Callum has to handle the ball, but Sean Higgins is the guy that has range. He's got a height advantage of Jeff Fryer. Sean Higgins should take advantage of his height. Mills inside, blocked by Scott. Fryer traveled with the ball. Well, Loyola Marymount is running people at Terry Mills, knowing that he has the height advantage, and you see right there, Scott, again, playing a great game, come over, get the tip, with on the fast break for Loyola Marymount, but they got the traveling call. Back comes Michigan, Sean Higgins. Wow. Nicely done to Eric Riley. Now this this is interesting because I, I was wondering if the Fisher's gonna give him a warning and on, on knocking the ball out. That's what Paul Westhead is trying to say. If you're a fast break team and they give a warning, one warning for either team means the next time you don't let the ball come out of your basket and go right to the offensive team, it's a, it's a technical foul. All right. All right. And that's what Paul Westhead is protesting for. And that's one way of slowing down Loyola Marymount. It's a very good way to do it. 1919 with 12 and a half to play, first half. Peabody fouled as he went the other way. The foul is on Caleb. No, I think they call that on Sean Higgins. I saw him go down and lose his balance, and then he tried to get back up, and in doing so, he just pushed Peabody. You are right, old former national collegiate basketball champion. <laughs> I was one to foul a lot. I want to make sure the right man gets the foul. <laughs> Member of that undefeated team, Indiana, back in 1976. What are your feelings like this time of year when you're on the court? Oh, I love it. I mean, this is the time of the year. You sit at home when you're a kid, you think about, you know, making the last shot, winning the national championship. That's all you have to think about. Kimball back into the lineup. Two shots don't go. Here's Lowry driving the baseline, and his reverse is blocked. Lowry chases it down. Back to Lowry for the three. And here comes Caleb. Good dribbling move at halftime. Oh, look at the passing! will be basket, in the basket interference and it'll go the other way but what a great display of passing by the wolverines coming down court well you know I, paul westhead wants to tempo up but as i said the michigan players have run they learn how to run when you first pick up a basketball that's all you do in pickup games and what paul westhead has done is try to put some kind of structure to it michigan is just going from instinct both kimball foul in the middle the foul is on number 52, Terry Mills. Timeout on the floor. 11.51 to play. We'll be back. Greg, they've wanted to push the ball up and down. They've really struggled getting it at the basket. And that's crucial for them. They're shooting like 33%. And they need to get it up about 55 in order to be successful. Tom Peabody with the basket. And there is a backcourt violation. And that'll go over to LMU. Eric Riley, I, I'm sure, just was trying to make sure the right person took the ball out of bounds. And he just stepped in with the ball. Clearly a violation. The Michigan Wolverines in the white defending national champions. And Jeff Pryor, leading scorer in the game so far with eight points, is back on the floor. Got a little more offense with Jeff. Here's Pryor out of the corner. <laughs> little offense with Jeff, folks. Pryor has 11, 24, 19. And the Wolverines break the press. Inside, foul is called. That one will go on Pryor. Higgins says he was shooting, and I think the officials disagree. Foul on 21, Jeff Pryor. 
16,000. Number two number. on Fryer, the 6'2 senior out of Newport Beach, California. Michigan with the better field goal percentage, but Loyola just firing them up as they go up and down the court. And Jeff Fryer and Loy Vaught, the leading scorers on each side. Well, it's a mild understatement to say they fire it up great, but the 33% is what obviously would hurt any team. But see, for Loyola, their shooting percentage is based on them shooting over 100 shots a game. Paul Westhead said, if we shoot 100 shots, then we have a very good chance of beating you. Loyola shoots normally about 51%, so they are a little slow. They were slow on Friday, but they seem to pick it up when they need to, as they did in the second half against New Mexico State. Sean Higgins. Hits the first, and he'll get a second. One only, play Willie. 6'9", junior from Los Angeles. So he's playing in front of some home crowd folks today. He's not only doing that great, but what there's been some question about is if he's got his confidence back. He had a stress fracture and just hasn't shot the ball quite as well, so he may not have the confidence he had before the injury. Paul Kimball, baseline drive. And the nation's leading scorer has five, and it's a five-point Loyola Marymount lead. Higgins for three. Chris Knight with the board. Under 11 minutes to play now. First half. Got Sean Higgins guarding Bo Kimball. Sean not normally a defensive shooter. Uh, player. Throws up an air ball out of bounds, and it belongs to Michigan. Here in the West region, Loyola Marymount knocked off New Mexico State 45 points Friday night by Bo Kimball. And they're taking on Michigan. Later today, it'll be Alabama against Arizona. Ball is kicked out of bounds. Michigan retains possession. Xavier leading Georgetown 28-15. Xavier's proven that their team to play. As a matter of fact, Xavier beat Loyola Marymount, so they've, they've proven that they can beat some good teams. This is Mills. Short hook doesn't go, and that'll go on Mills over the back of Chris Knight. Well, they've got to watch getting Terry Mills in foul trouble because they are only 5-5 five and five in terms of a season record when either Terry Mills or Lloyd Vaught get in foul trouble, and going up and down wears big people out making them exposed to getting fouls. That's two personal fouls on Mills. Kimball with Griffin on it. He'll take him off the dribble. Shot doesn't fall. Caleb has the rebound and pushes it up court. And he traveled. And that's a very good call. The fish are right on top of it. It's right in front of him. Demetrius Caleb looked like he wanted to pass and at the last minute rolled his hand and the official right on it. Go! Go! Three back! Four turnovers now for each team. Turnovers for Michigan will be something to watch because they're no, normally turn it over only about four turnover, I mean 14 turnovers a game. They have four already with 10 minutes to go in the first half. And Mike Griffin has just drawn another foul trying to keep up with Bo Kimball. Minnesota with a six-point lead over Northern Iowa in Southeast region of play. Into the game number 20, Terrell Lowry for Loyola Marymount. A little more offense with Terrell Lowry. Tony Walker has great speed up and down the court. Really wanted to come to Loyola to put that speed to use. But Terrell Lowry is a much better scorer. Both teams in the bonus situation now. Good short shot by Chris Knight. He has four. This is who Steve Fisher didn't want to have the ball. Lloyd Vaught, not on the uh, press. Michigan will now go into the offense with Neil Robinson for three. Michigan's team leader in scoring steals and assists and back to Lowry with the three. Rebound attempt, and Chris Knight draws the foul. To the line is Lloyd Vaught. And I don't, didn't want to overlook the fact you see UCLA has gotten themselves back in the regional. I think credit needs to go to Jim Herrick because the UCLA program was supposedly in a rebuilding stage. I guess the rebuilding is over. <laughs> Kimball and Lowry. And the Loyola Marymount shot clock is down to about 25, which is as low as you'll ever see it. 
Don't worry, they'll get a shot up because it's, it's way too low for them. Kimball inside, throws up a prayer, rebound Lowry. You remember Steve Fisher was worried about rebounding, an offensive rebound as much as anything. And there's an offensive foul on Demetrius Taylor. Well, interesting enough, that's Chris Knight. He's 6'9 taking that charge. Steve Fisher doesn't want to see him turn the ball over, but you'll see Chris Knight get there, get in position. And Demetrius Caleb was losing his balance, knocked Knight over. As much notoriety as the Loyola Marymount offense gets, their defense on the press is considerable. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I, in a half-court game, their defense gets helter skelter if you slow it down. On, on the full-court press, they make a sincere effort to try to cause turnovers to their credit. Fryer, open, top of the key. <laughs> Green's another three, and it's 33-24. 14 for Pryor. This is where Romil can make a lot of good things happen. Loy Vaught gets the bucket, and it's a traveling violation in the backcourt, and Michigan has control. Jeff Fryer has four of those seven three-pointers for Loyola Marymount. Well, we got to consider the fact that Bo Kimball hadn't even gotten on track, so to have Fryer get off this well gives Bo a chance to, to get in his rhythm. And as we all know, by the second half of New Mexico State, when Bo gets his rhythm, he's as good as they come. Terry Mills with a good turnaround. Eight points for Mills. Lowry on the drive, throws it up and scores. Tough move. 35-28. Robinson, and that one went off of his leg. Into the game for Loyola Marymount, number 11, Tom Peabody. 34, Chris Knight will take a breather. As will Demetrius Caleb and number 14, Michael Talley, into the lineup for Steve Fisher's Michigan Wolverines. Uh, probably was going to talk to Demetrius about trying to get the ball in his hands because Ramil is so much into taking challenges. He's a competitor, and he's taking a challenge against a team that wants to run it up and down the court. Peabody was open, didn't hit it, though, and Vaught had the rebound. Vaught had 21 rebounds against Illinois State here Friday night. He has five today. Robinson out of the corner, that's short. That's a bad shot. That's a quick shot, and we talked about it earlier. Ramil can't afford to take it particularly like it that quickly. Oh, what a drive by Terrell Lowry. Just as you begin to look for that three-point bomb, Terrell Lowry drives the lane. Seven minutes to play, first half. 37-29, Loyola Marymount. That's Ramil Robinson. Came around the corner, and he just pushed Tom Peabody in the back. That's the first personal foul on Ramil Robinson, and it'll be a one-and-one one for Loyola Marymount. Steve Fisher seeing his star player, Ramil Robinson, take a bad shot come down and get a, a foul. He's not seeing the kind of tempo he likes. This man, Ramil Robinson, has got to control the tempo. Can't take the quick shots. Number four, Tony Tolbert into the lineup for the first time this afternoon. He replaces Mike Griffin. Tolbert, a 6'4 freshman from Detroit. And this is the human bruise. <laughs> That's my kind of player, Greg. I said that before. They say Peabody is as likely to wind up in our laps as anywhere on the floor today with his diving antics. You know what, what I really like about him? He does the same thing in practice, you know, so it's not something that's contrived just for a game, even though you want to make sure it happens in the game. He does it every time he's on the court. Loyola Marymount with its biggest lead and driving in and scoring is Michael Talley. Talley's got good offensive skills. He's got to learn, though, when you get the shot, you take it, but be careful because you'll be forced to that tempo. Kimball will go to the line to try to make it a three-point play. Let's take you back to Friday night when Bo Kimball said that for every game he plays in this tournament, he will shoot his first free throw left-handed. 
he stepped to the line Friday night against New Mexico State in memory of his close friend and former teammate Hank Gathers and drilled it. The fans fully behind him and are expecting it now. Greg, he's got a stroke with it, too. Reminds me of my old days. <laughs> There's the steal by Peabody. Oh, and a dish for Lowry. Oh, oh. Steve Fisher wants timeout. Loyola Marymount's fans are going wild. We'll be back. Look at Long Beach Arena where Loyola Marymount has grabbed a 14-point lead over Michigan. Eight Michigan turnovers have led to 14 points for the Lions, and there's the human bruise. The human bruise is down, but it's off of that, that press where we were talking about that Loyola Marymount, they're trying to force you into turnovers, and then we got a little extracurricular conversation going on here. Tell him, come on and get me, and Ramil will be sure to respond. Yeah, maybe a little early for that, <laughs> you're right. 6.24 to play, first half, and the Lions have jumped, exploded to a 14-point lead. And the press is on. Robinson now turns it into a four-on-one break, and Sean Higgins scores at the other end. This is Walker. Kimball puts it up. He's got the stroke, Greg. You can just see it now. I mean, he had Sean Higgins, who's three inches taller than he is, right in his face, did Bo Kimball, and just stroked it. The most remarkable performance or aspect of his performance as Higgins puts the shot up and the rebound comes out to Michigan. Most remarkable perform uh, aspect of his performance Friday night was how well he played and how many points he scored after he had four personal fouls. He scored 35. And he picked up his fourth personal with seven minutes to play in the first half. Tally's outside shot doesn't go, and the youngster Chris Scott pulls it down. Walker, foul as he drove. The foul is on Tally. Well, we're looking at Tally right here, but the thing that we need to mention is that right now Loyola has 46 points. They had 46 points at the end of the first half against New Mexico State and then just exploded. So they're back more into their tempo, and they've got Michigan running in their tempo, which definitely has to be to Loyola's advantage. Tally to the bench for Michigan. Walker to the line for Loyola Marymount. You know, to fill the, the void by the loss of Hank Gathers, everybody has to pick up. And I think Walker is a critical ingredient because he has to push the ball up to create easy scoring opportunities. He has no points but six assists today. Ramil Robinson into the lane. No shot doesn't go. Rebound, out of bounds to Michigan. Walker led the West Coast Conference with seven and a half assists a game. And I've got to tell you, it's not that difficult to pick up an assist on this Loyola Marymount team. Well, they get assists because you throw them and they shoot a jump shot from the three-point line. Terry Mills bombs away from outside. He has 10. Fryer, baseline. A good move by Jeff Fryer. And Fryer has 16. Really come up big here in the first half, Greg. Fryer has played extremely well on the offensive end. Michigan will slow it down now. Defending national champion. Turnaround by Mills is good. Terry Mills is, is doing what, what he's been doing all year. He had a bad game, uh, and they knew that he'd come out and play a good game today because he had a bad game on Friday. He hadn't played two back-to-back -back bad games all season, so we expected to see Terry have a good game. Fryer traveled as the turnover. Meanwhile, Pierce Steamer back into the lineup for Loyola Marymount. <laughs> Full court pressure and finally inbound. Ramil Robinson has it taken away by Peabody, who's down on the floor with him. And the whistle blows, and there is a travel. And Peabody will go to the bench. Meanwhile, Steve Fisher giving counsel on the other side of the floor. Peabody did a great effort to come up with the steal, but he comes in and makes a lot of things happen. Now it's up to the, the starters 
defense to get out, keep up the defensive pressure so you can keep the tempo going in Loyola's favor. Michigan with nine turnovers. Loyola Miriam out with six. There's a steal. Here comes Kimball. Foul, and he'll shoot two. Well, you, you can see right here that Bo's got his mind made up. He's going to take it to the basket. There's no question about Ramil getting over there trying to prevent the shot. But Bo Kimball had his mind made up. I thought he was going to try to dunk the ball. Ramil Robinson did a good job cutting off the angle. 11 points, three boards. The nation's leading scorer at 35.6 a game. His 45 points Friday night, a West Regional scoring record. But he was a little disappointed, Greg. He told us he was going to get seven. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. <laughs> when he told us that, we laughed, and we looked back at him, and he wasn't laughing. Here's Griffin. Open and hits. Mike Griffin has four. Kimball on the move. And Mills with the rebound. Michigan quickly into the front court and Mills open and curls another one home. It's great for Michigan when they're making that shot. But Greg, once they get the ball over the court, they're barely letting five seconds run off the clock. So as long as they're making, obviously it's good. But if they start missing those shots, that's when the fast breaks come up for Loyola Marymount. Mills has 14. Kimball's shot is off. Griffin has the rebound. And back come the Wolverines. And there's a foul in the backcourt on Walker. That's number two on Tony Walker. See, Michigan's got 10 turnovers and potential 20 points, and you see Loyola Marymount has 16 of those 20. Shall we call them capitalists? <laughs> yeah, that, that, they'll take advantage of a little turnover here and there. Here's Demetrius Caleb. 66% free throw shooter. And there's his first point of the day. One shot, man! Here we go! It is now an eight-point lead for Loyola Marymount with 327 to play as number 24, Sean Higgins, comes into the Michigan lineup. Steve Fisher doing a good job keeping the rotation going, Greg, getting guys fresh legs, giving them breathers, taking Griffin out, bringing some more offense in with Sean Higgins. But they put Sean Higgins on both Kimball. Fryer. That's who they've got to stop. Fryer has 18. Good pass. Higgins for Romeo Robinson. Michigan basket by Romeo Robinson. Bo Kimball nails a long one. We welcome those of you who have been watching Xavier in Georgetown. Here it is 54-44, Loyola Marymount leading the defending national champion Michigan Wolverines by 10. Wolverines whip the ball in white, and it has been Loyola Marymount's pace, and they have been hitting from long range. Speaking of hitting from long range, Terry Mills hits two more. He has 16, and he's 8 for 11 from the field. He, Terry Mills has been playing well, but I think as long as you got the rhythm of Loyola Marymount, they've got to the feel happy. Right now, they got 57 points with two and a half minutes to go in the game. This is along the pace that Loyola Marymount wants. Terrell Lowry with the three. Ramil Robinson back and scores. Ramil Robinson beginning to heat up. He has nine, but here come the Lions. <laughs> Fryer is on fire here in the first half. He has 21. That's five three-pointers. And the foul in the backcourt is on Kimball. Well, Bo, would have been better, Bo Kimball would have been better off not fouling there because I'll tell you what, I'm looking at the Michigan players. They're a little slow walking back <laughs> for this foul line. They're just worn out for this pace. Steve Fisher said, we're used to an up-tempo game but we're not used to what Loyola Marymount is going to throw at us. I've, I've said this before, and, and Steve Fisher knows it as well as anybody. You cannot get practice this kind of pace because Loyola just does it so much better than anybody else in the country. Look at the three-point shooting. Loyola Marymount shooting 53% from behind the line. 
Caleb at the line. That's way short. And Mills has it and puts it up. Well, he is rolling, Greg. Michigan basket by Terry Mills. Terry Mills now with 18 points. This is Chris Knight in on the baseline and back up top. Schemer fakes the three, tries to get it back outside and lost it. Up ahead for Tolbert and the basket will count. So Michigan comes right back, and we have a little more conversation. This time, Terrell Lowry, number 20, and number 24, Sean Higgins, and looks to be getting a little serious. Well, they're, they're exchanging greetings, Greg. I'm sure that's all it is. Late for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Michael Pelley in the game for Michigan, replacing Demetrius Caleb. Tony Tolbert at the free throw line, shooting one. Tolbert makes it a 60-53 game. As we approach a minute and a half, Kimball for three. And there's a foul on Pierre Steamer behind, and I think Pierre might regret that one. Yeah, that's one he really didn't have to give, Greg. You know, there, there was no chance for him to get the rebound. You like aggressive play, but you don't need to go in and slap like that. Here in the West region, Loyola Marymount and Michigan, the winner here, advances to Oakland, California next weekend to play the winner of our next game this afternoon. The Crimson Tide of Alabama, the Arizona Wildcats. Meanwhile, the other West Regional action in Salt Lake City, Nevada, Las Vegas, and Ball State have moved on. So those are the other two teams that you will see coming out of Oakland, California here on CBS next weekend. Terry Mills hits from the free throw line. If you've got to talk about anybody playing well, it's got to be right here. Terry Mills, he's looking at what, about 19 points. And, and he doesn't have a lot of rebounds, but he's come back with his offense, and he's the main reason that Michigan is right where they are in this game. That one will go on Riley. The 6'11 freshman fouls over the back. And let's make note of the fact that was once a 14-point lead for Loyola Marymount is now six. Well, you got Lloyd Vaught coming in. He's got a considerable break there. You know, you got Eric Riley, the young freshman, but he comes in, and if you can give Vaught a break, you know, he, that allows him to stay involved in the game without exposing himself to foul trouble, considering the pace of the game. Steamer. It's the first. The 6'7 junior from Sondertalje, Sweden. I'm getting so good at saying that. You've got that down to a science. Hits them both, 62-54. And Demetrius Caleb replaces Tally. And Tom Peabody off the Loyola Marymount bench for Chris Knight. Both coach to substitute, given breaks, Chris Knight. Chris, is sure. Chris Knight was a player that we were concerned as to whether or not he'd show up to play in the tournament. I think he's done a great job getting some rebounds, getting some points for the uh, Lions. Pressure turn forces the turnover, and this is Lowry. <laughs> Caleb was triple teamed in the backcourt and coughed it up. Here comes Colbert down the lane. Nice shot. Shows you he's got some skill. And the steal by Colbert. Takes it to the baseline. Out of bounds. Belongs to Michigan. Good defensive play by Steamer, number four. Under a minute. 58 seconds to play. 64-56. Coming up at halftime, Jim Nance, Mike Francesa in our studios in New York. They'll update you on lots of tight games this afternoon, and they'll set the stage for next week's matchups in this year's NCAA championship. Got to get the ball right there because Tom Peabody, there's no way he can guard for the third bill. Tapped out of bounds, Michigan again. And now Ramil Robinson will check back in for Michigan. Minnesota with the three-point lead in the Southeast. And Xavier continues to dominate Georgetown that game at halftime. Well, that's, your, that's another one of those surprises that I know I didn't expect to see. No shot clock. 35 seconds to play, first half. 64-56 Loyola Marymount, and 
Michigan content to hold it. Michigan would probably get, got Sean Higgins and Ramil Robinson. You want to get them on the side with Terry Mills and let him post up because he's been playing great on the offensive end. Good shot by Caleb. 64-58. Kimball on the run, inside, draws the foul, and he'll go to the line. With nine seconds showing, Kimball will shoot two. Foul is on Michael Talley. That's two on Talley. And Steve Fisher playing part of timekeeper on the sideline. Two man! Two shots! Tom Kimball at the free throw line shooting two. Kimball missed that one. More like a brick. <laughs> Quite frankly, he was a great shooter. That was really a brick. He has 15 points. And now Bo is to give up the basketball while the officials confer as to whether Michigan can make a substitution here. They can. And they can. He, Bo already had the ball. And the officials making the call. So Lloyd Vaught will uh, take a seat. Kimball with 16 points, and now Peabody into the game to replace Bo Kimball for the final nine seconds. I'm going to say Bo from getting his third foul, and Peabody is also capable of coming up with a steal. Here's Ramil Robinson. He'll pull up and block from behind by Peabody. Three seconds. Wow. And the whistle blows. It's a traveling violation, but Terrell Lowry gave it a shot, didn't he? Oh, he gave it a great shot. He threw the ball left-handed, and it was only about four feet short. Well, not quite that. Two feet short from going in. We still have a second to go on the clock, and Michigan will inbound it, and now Loy Vaught comes in. And Mike Griffin will, too. Steve Fisher looking at a chance to try to get cut the lead down a little bit more, just going in here. I think we're looking at the possibility of a lob to one of the big guys inside. Terry Mills will inbound. And now number 14, Michael Talley, wants in for Michigan. And Paul Westhead says, what's the deal here? Well, I count five players on the floor now, so the Wolverines had <laughs> one too many. No, they had two too many. <laughs> they had seven players on the court. One second to go. And time expired. No, we got a five-second call. We got a five-second call. They couldn't get the ball out to Ramil. Steve Fisher standing there trying to figure out what went wrong. And Michigan just did a poor job of setting picks to get that, and they were looking for Ramil Robinson. Poor job of getting him open. So now Bo Kimball back into the lineup, and he and Pear Steamer are going to figure out exactly what they want to do with this one second remaining. They, they don't have a chalkboard. I'm not sure what they can come up with here for this last second. I don't imagine it'll differ much from their usual offense. <laughs> get open and throw it up there. Steamer lofts it. And the whistle blows as Cole oh. got the shot off. <laughs> Wait. He must have stepped. Wait a minute. Uh, now, if they stand the ball, go, if it's out of bounds, if he caught it out of bounds and they bring it back over here, then there's still a second remaining on the clock. Yeah. He, oh, they said he caught it and stepped out of bounds. He caught the ball in bounds and stepped out of bounds. But you see the pass right here. Now, if he catches the ball and he's already out of bounds, then the ball rightfully should come back to where Paris Steamer threw it. Now he catches the ball. He touches the ball there and then steps on the line. He steps out on the line. And, and still hit the shot. Threw up a raindrop. They, they, they put the one second back on the clock. Group at a concert. <laughs> <laughs> the fans are cheering for him and now they make their appearance. So what this will do is mirror the exact situation Michigan had earlier. No, it won't either, because it'll be inbounded at the other end of the court. It's the length of the court, and the only thing you really do is just, just try to get it down here and get a shot up. Paul Westhead got him engaged in a little bit of conversation. But he's got the best, the best of the calls right now, because if Boy had caught the ball out of bounds, they can have it, Michigan have it on their own half court line. And we're only just beginning here in Long Beach today. <laughs> yeah.
you know, but Greg, we got a second to go. We got 65 points by Loyola Marymount. They average 124 points a game, well on their way to what they like to get in terms of scoring. Chris Knight will defend against Terry Mills, who will probably do his best Boomer Esiason here. Now, it's got to touch somebody in bounds. If they go straight out of bounds, Loyola gets it back where Chris Mills is. He just lobs it. And Steamer has it. And now we're at halftime. That's the end of the first half. The condition you're in, because one half of doing it is one thing. To do it in, uh, for another 20 minutes is entirely different. Bo Kimball. Left open. Didn't fall for it. Chris Knight up high for the rebound. Steamer with the loose ball. Walker, Kimball, Steamer, Knight, and Fryer, the starters in the second half here for Loyola Marymount. Kimball works his way down the lane, and he'll go to the line. Looks like a little bit of a strategy change here. Bo Kimball had not been getting picks in the first half, and all of a sudden you see Paris Steamer is setting up picks on Mike Griffin to free Bo Kimball, and Bo Kimball faked toward the pick, went back, got Terry Mills for the foul. Bo Kimball has to shoot two. Well, I'm sure the thinking of uh, Paul Westhead is to get Bo Kimball off as he did in the second half against New Mexico State. That was the rhythm that the Lions needed. Westhead said, all right, let's find ways to get Bo Kimball more shots. <laughs> 17 for Kimball, 67-58, and the full court press which worked so well in the first half for the Lions. Vaught takes it right at Steamer and comes up way short, and Steamer is fouled. Lloyd Vaught just hated it. You can see in his face he missed that shot, and he hated that he missed that. Got himself a little too anxious, went back and then fouled. It's number three on Vaught. You know, Sean Higgins of Michigan said one of the things we don't do well this year is get the ball to Glenn Rice. <laughs> no, that, that, <laughs> you know, they look for Glenn Rice a little bit early in the season. And I think that happens when you have a player as good as Rice, and, and it took the team a while to get their identity. It's evident by the fact that they're here playing in this game that they found that identity. Rice, of course, having gone on to the NBA. Kimball. Oh! For Walker. And Walker's missed Vaught's rebound. And Chris Knight almost stole it from him. Look at the pressure. Go get it. Caleb. Oh, oh. shot. Oh. Oh. Comes down with it and puts it back up. Oh. Caleb goes back up. Hey. Offensive rebound. Hey. Anytime you let a, a team get three shots at the basket, they're used to get it in or get fouled. For Knight and Knight for Steamer for three. Knight chases it down. Back outside. Here's Fryer. What a quick release Jeff Fryer has. But the play goes to Chris Knight. He was strong enough and had the presence of mind to get the ball to Fryer. Caleb misses the outlet. Here comes Walker down the lane. Kimball missed the follow up, and here comes Michigan. Robinson right at Steamer, and a blocking foul on Steamer. He gets that ball. Great effort is a necessity when you're playing in a game like this. You've got to do all the little things. You see, Knight is still able to stay in, but he finds Jeff Fryer open. But the credit has to go to Chris Knight to be able to not only save the ball, but find his score, Jeff Fryer. Terry Mills inbounding for Michigan. And tapped out of bounds and belongs to the Wolverines. Steve Fisher giving Caleb some instructions. To step back a few feet. He wants Steve, <laughs> he wants Demetrius Caleb to go all the way to the uh, other half of the court to not get caught up with the pressure that Loyola Marymount can put on you. Griffin is giving that shot. He's going to have to take it. Lloyd Vaught has a call for him. 70 to 62. Fryer into the lane and back outside. Steamer for three. Eleven for Steamer. A lot of weapons. A lot of weapons. Michigan in a hurry again. Oh. 
Robinson in the lane, throws it up, doesn't go. Rebound out to the Wolverines, and Terry Mills. Steamer up high, but loses it. And they'll start over from outside. Swinging around, Robinson for three. And Ramil Robinson connects from long range. He has 12. Back from the Lions. They're on the drive. And a blocking foul on Michigan's Mike Griffin. Tony Walker was really upset that he was not able to get that shot down. Able to get the ball up. But, you know, Loyola Marymount gets you when they make shots more so than when they miss it because people have a tendency to relax just as you see Tony Walker take the ball to the basket. Guys like to go back court, you know, kind of let everybody see that they've done a great job. But Loyola Marymount feels that's when you're most vulnerable after you've made a shot. They force it back at you. You cannot Cadillac back down the court. No, you say. <laughs> no, no chance for going back down court and styling as the fellas like to do. No point six assists for this young man today. It's his first. But he has, he's got, he's got the tempo up, so he's done what he's needed to do. And Mike Griffin, the guy that's been doing a very good job with Bo Kimball, has now got his third foul. Two free throws for Walker, 75-65, 10-point lead for the Lions. Robinson thinks better of the three with Loyola Marymount all over him. Higgins long range, Bach follows. And back come the Lions, down the lane, back outside, whistle blows. And the offensive foul on Walker. Walker out of control on that drive. And, and Terry Mills did a good job anticipating what Walker was trying to do once he saw Walker blocked off. Did, did the right thing. Get there and establish your position. Michigan's Big Ten cousins, Purdue, falling to Texas by one today. Higgins. Nice move. Sean Higgins. Six points for Higgins. 75-69. Kimball, three-pointer on the way. Peabody into the lineup with the rebound. Good find to Steamer. Tough shot by Steamer. Peabody showing his presence again. Getting the loose ball. The big guy, Terry Mills, running the floor. The pass out of bounds to LMU. More offense into the lineup for Loyola Marymount. Terrell Lowry will replace Tony Walker. As you look at other scores from NCAA tournament play. Come back in with Terrell Lowry. Try to get a little more offense from that spot. Terrell Lowry can hit his shot. Now you do it. But makes it much more difficult to guard Loyola Marymount because he can hit both the outside as well as take it to the basket. Kimball looking for his shot. Backs up behind the three-point line. Let's go. It doesn't go. Michigan, good save by number 14, Michael Talley. Robinson pressure gets the ball over the line. And out of the corner, Sean Higgins. Big rebound by Kimball. Lowry loses it. Ramil Robinson pushes it. This young man plays hard. Well, he really does play hard, but now he's got the, the Loyola Marymount Lions in a tough spot. He's got four fouls, so that's something that Steve Fisher's crew has got to enjoy. You see, Ramil Robinson, there's no question he's going to jam it, but Paris Steamer's not going to let him go for an easy shot. Comes across the top. Paris Steamer's got to come out of the game now. Into the game is number 31, Chris Scott. Well, with Paris Steamer going out, you don't lose not only defense, but you, he's shown his ability to make the three-point shot, draw some of the Wolverines away from the basket. Chris Scott is, is a freshman. He's coming into a power pack situation. Never been exposed to NCAA basketball, particularly at tournament time. This is a much different than playing during the regular season. And Steamer really is the only true banger down low that Loyola Marymount has. One out of two for Robinson. We'll take timeout with 15-19 to play here in Long Beach. You gotta like Syracuse, boy. They've got, you know, Derek Coleman and, and 
and get around that, that basket. And they've been able to put pressure on people. And then once they made the change, you can see the John Edwards away from the point guard. They've gotten a good leadership, too. What a move inside by Bo Kimball. He has 19. And there's the takeaway. Kimball. Oh, blew the layup. Tried to draw the foul. And there's a foul by Peabody at center court. And Romeo Robinson was fouled at midcourt. Bo Kimball, in trying to draw the foul to keep the defender from going up, trying to make contact with the body, just didn't get enough on the ball and shot it short. Kimball is not having a good shooting day. Six for 22 from the floor. Higgins pressured by Fryer. It is Tally, Robinson, Loy Vaught, Terry Mills, and Sean Higgins. This is Mills. Yeah, but this is what Michigan needs to do. They've been able to get back in the game close enough. With Paris Steam out of the game, he was the strongest, biggest player that Loyola Marymount has. The way to take advantage of it is post Mills and Vaught. Lowry comes back with the three-pointer. 82-72. Lions by 10. And there's another turnover. Three on one. Lowry. Lloyd Vaught was the man trying to fill in. He never could get there, Greg. The, the pace is too fast for him. He couldn't get in to fill in the break. Tom Peabody is hurt. Tom Peabody holding his right hand and goes to the Loyola bench. Well, he's already got it wrapped, so uh, it looks as though he may have jammed that wrist again. The, the trainer's over there looking at it. Meanwhile, Demetrius Caleb in for Michael Talley. And pressure almost causes another turnover. Caleb beats it and puts it up off the glass. Kimball with the rebound. Fryer for three. blows and the foul goes against Loyola Marymount. <laughs> Jeff Fryer has drawn his third personal. And foul or no, it's Loyola Marymount's kind of game. Yeah, it definitely is, Greg. They're pushing it up and down. And what you'll notice that'll happen later in the game when, when Michigan gets tired you'll see that Loyola Marymount be able to get more rebounds because it's not a matter of height now it's a matter of getting to the ball quickly and Loyola Marymount has the quicker people Tom Peabody has ice on that hand on the Loyola Marymount bench Romeo Robinson inside good move by Romeo Robinson Robinson has 15 Lowry forcing a three and a whistle blows underneath let's see who the foul is on on Bo? No, they didn't. It is on Bo Kimball. That's number three on Kimball. Well, Bo, Bo ran in there and he's trying to kip dunk again. Eighty-four, seventy-four. Thirteen twenty to play here in the game, and there's a foul on Knight. And for one of the few times you will ever see, Paul Westhead turn to his players and said, take it easy. Yeah, it really is, because what he, he recognizes that he's got his lead, one of his leading scores, Jeff Fryer, sitting on the bench. But the other problem is now you're looking at Michigan has already gotten themselves into the penalty with 13 minutes to go. Now it's a matter of every time you foul Michigan, you, they get foul shots. Westhead was questioned and in some corners criticized for leaving Bo Kimball in the game Friday night with four personal fouls and his response was if you have your best player on the bench he is of no value yours truly was one to question that I, I really did and you're right when we asked that's what he said he said you gotta, the only way we can win is having have Bo in there Caleb hits the first free throw thank you 84-75. Steve Fisher enjoying a tremendous run in postseason play in his short tenure at Michigan. 84-76. Back comes Walker. 
Lowry, pass Robinson. Well, now you won't see that very often. Not anybody just passed LaVille Robinson. 20 points for Lowry. Higgins. And a couple of Lions converge on him out of bounds to Michigan. Jeff Fryer back into the game for Loyola. 42, Eric Riley for Michigan. And Pierce Steamer with four personal fouls back into the lineup. They got the big body back in there because Eric Riley comes in. Scott did a good job. Coming in off the bench, got rebound, missed an opportunity to get a basket, but he's done a good job under the fire. Here's Terry Mills, stripped to the ball. Outlet for Kimball, who tracks it down. Fryer out of the corner. He will nail that shot all day long. He has 27 out of bounds, and it belongs to Loyola Marymount. says we've got to talk this over with 12 minutes 31 seconds to play Orleans for the regional semifinals next weekend Loyola Marymount inbounding the ball and whistle blows got a foul on Mike Griffin of Michigan and I believe that's four on Griffin. And Griffin, as you pointed out, Quinn has done an exceptional job guarding Bo Kimball today. The only way you can guard Bo Kimball is keep him from getting the ball, and that's what Mike Griffin has been successful at doing. Kimball, down the lane, good pass to Knight. Effectively blocked by Riley, and a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Michigan. Jim Nance in New York will get you right back to that one. But in the meantime, 43 seconds left at Richmond, and it's a five-point lead now in this one for Minnesota. Brent and Billy are there with the call. 40 seconds, 78, 73, a five-point lead. The defense has been extended out to threes. They now. can take it two if they want to. Instead, they turn it over, and a foul is going to be called here. Uh, welcome those of you who've been watching Loyola Marymount in Michigan. Here we're coming down to the last 33 seconds. Eldon Miller and Northern Iowa are in trouble. 78-73, Minnesota with a five-point lead over Miller's team. And Minnesota will be coming up to the free-throw line. One timeout left for Coach Miller. The big player from Minnesota, he's having a career game, is the senior forward from Detroit, Willie Burton. Those of you back in the Detroit area remember him as a high school player. 34 points to go along with his 12 rebounds. He has been spectacular here today. It's a six-point lead. This is a big free throw with the three-point play in effect. And he misses it. Now if they can hurry and get a quick turnover. Watch the defense now by Minnesota. They've extended beyond the three-point line. Munberg will take the first one. Oh, yes. Three, 22 seconds to go, and timeout is called. Back in it. And you'll be back to see the last 22 seconds. The NCAAs of this year. What else is new? We're coming back. And then they're going to go into full court pressure situation. They Obviously, it's a one and one, so they can foul. And a good job by Minnesota to get the ball in the hands of the fellow who's had the hot hand today, Burton. Burton has had his career game here today. 34 points for Coach Clem Haskins. And he'll come up to the free throw line. Already Syracuse has advanced on the road down to New Orleans. And now Burton, and this is the moment for Minnesota, 21 seconds. He missed the second shot in the one one his last time at the free throw line. He's 7 of 10 from the line here today. 12 rebounds to go with his 34 points. And Brent, Minnesota not putting everybody on the line. I think that's a mistake in this part of the game because they rebound so well offensively. Now the lead is at four with 21 seconds. And that was a dagger. And now Minnesota closing in on New Orleans. Last 18 seconds. Newby they got blocked by Lynch, and that's gonna do it. 13 seconds left. Got a foul. Intercepted. 
They hit Reese. Reese jams it still five seconds to go. 81 78. And this game is over. Minnesota advances to the Sweet 16. Next week, let's get back now to Long Beach. One hundred to seventy-nine. Loyola Marymount has gone to the one hundred mark for the twenty-seventh time in thirty games this season, and we still have more than ten and a half minutes to play. It has been another offensive explosion for the Lions of Loyola Marymount and an enthusiastic home crowd. It's been a lot of good things for Loyola Marymount. Is Bo Kimball has been able to score, but the team has been able to keep the, the transition game, as evident by the fact that you just mentioned. They have 100 points with 10 minutes to go. That's what Loyola Marymount wants to do. They average 124 points a game. They're well on their way to getting that. Michigan is stretching their range now. They don't. They average 85 points a game. They have 79 now. So you've got to figure they're getting a little tired here. Minnesota has defeated Northern Iowa 81 to 78. So the Golden Gophers move on to New Orleans. That's the program that's really struggled as well. Clem Haskin has done an outstanding job of getting that back on track. Kimball, three-pointer on the way. No, Peabody. Back to Kimball. And out of the corner, Lowry. Loyola Marymount is just drilling them from all over the court. Yeah, but they're getting the long rebounds, and again, that's when you take advantage of your quickness. Height that cannot get the long rebounds, quickness normally does. Tally alone, top of the key, comes up short. Mills puts it back. Nice shot by Terry Mills, high off the glass. That's a technical foul. The Wolverines were warned earlier by the officials about tampering with the ball once it came through the rim. And Bo Kimball will shoot the technical. Well, one of the, one of the things you can do to slow down a fast-paced team as Loyola Marymount is, is when the ball comes through the net, you grab it. Now, there's no reason for Lloyd Vaught to have grabbed the ball. The official had already warned. And if you grab the ball after one warning, to both either one of the teams, it's a technical the next time that that happens, and they call it on Lloyd Vaught. Bo Kimball made the first shot. When I say home crowd for Loyola Marymount, that's effectively what it is with the school right up the road in Los Angeles, just 30 miles away. I was talking to Jeff Fryer, and he said, I was asking where they were staying. He said, it's easy for us to stay at home and you come and stay at the hotel here. Peabody for Steamer. And Kimball going to work down low. Back to Steamer. Oh, come on, baby. Side, and he'll go to the line. I wonder how does a guy from Sweden fit in with a run and gun offense like this? Very well. Very well indeed. <laughs> well, because he, he knows his role, and his role is to play good defense, rebound, and if they don't come and guard you at the three point shot, the one thing you don't have to worry about with Paul Westhead is that he won't tell you not to shoot. If you're open, we'll tell you shoot the ball. 17.8 rebounds for Steamer as Caleb returns to the Michigan lineup. Chris Stein is in the game for Loyola Marymount. And while the faces are not happy ones on the Wolverine side, over at Loyola Marymount side, they are ecstatic as Bo Kimball takes a rest. <laughs> you and I just looked at each other. Paris Seymour shot the ball and was on his way back before he got to the rim. Higgins with the bucket. 
Michigan basket by Sean Higgins. Which is just fine with Loyola Marymount. Back comes Fryer. Chris Knight. That won't go. And they crash the boards, and the foul goes against the Lions. Now that's a shocker. You got Georgetown and Xavier with two minutes to go. That's 70 point five. Georgetown has made it up. Chris Knight has fouled out of the game with four points, six rebounds. But give the young man credit. He played with a lot of heart. He kept some balls alive, you know, and, and, and that's what he really needed to do was to keep it alive. Now we'll get you back to the finish of this one. We know Loyola is moving in on the single game scoring record in the tournament, 124 points. But Georgetown's come back from 16 down to tie it. Let's go to Indianapolis. A tie ball game. Georgetown used a 23 to 9 run to get back into this game. Key stat there, Xavier without any timeouts with 2.02 remaining. And we welcome those of you who've been watching Loyola Marymount and Michigan here to the Midwest region second round game. Georgetown Xavier battling for the right to move on to the round of 16 in Dallas. 154 remaining, all tied at 70 apiece. Straight up man to man. This is Xavier. Watch the double on the dribble, particularly with Walker. Walker off the mark, but rebounded by Aaron Williams, who gets the big basket over morning. Baptism of fire in one of the most important games in Xavier's history. And Walker tags the ever active David Edwards. Georgetown decreased the number of turnovers, increased their field goal shooting percentage. Tyrone Hill fouled out for Xavier, a big loss. Their leading score at 20 a game. So Xavier operating without any timeouts and their leading score. And that's and because of the aggressive play of the dribblers of Georgetown. They took it to Hill. David Edwards misses the free throw. He's got 18 on the game has yet to convert from the free throw line at 0 for 2. Cuts the Musketeers lead to 1 with 128 remaining. Amy Gladden, Jamal Walker, Derek Strong, Aaron Williams and Michael Davenport to 5 in for Xavier. When you're not a, uh, if you're the type of team that likes to rev it up, and you're not used to holding it, you've got to be concerned about what type of shot you end up with at the end of the shot sequence. Xavier not used to this. Oh, wow. Blocked by Mutombo. Morning tried to tap it ahead to Bryant. And Edwards. Oh, tries to steal great. it back to Xavier. Great all-out effort. Seven second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Xavier holding on to a one point lead over the third seeded Hoyas of Georgetown. Walker very calm. And Walker pushed from behind by David Edwards. He was taking a look at the time. But a big effort defensively by Georgetown. He just didn't come up clean after the shot block. 23 seconds remaining. Xavier with no timeouts. Leading by one. They may get one. I think John may be looking to call one just before the ball is handed. Now he's waving it off. Number 10. or less this season, Xavier has been very calm and collect four and one. The At the free out. throw line, Jamal Walker. On the miss, Xavier will try and tip it back, and of course, Georgetown will try and react and grab it. That's James, if he happens to make this, now I still think John Thompson can go inside to the big guy, get the deuce, and call his timeout and get his press organized. Not take the three. Not take the three, he doesn't have to. 
Plenty of time. This would make it a three-point lead. And they're looking for the three. Tillman for three. In and out. Xavier with the ball. And Aaron Williams is fouled. a freshman only a 38 percent free throw shooter trying to add to a three-point lead rebounded by Mutombo with 10 seconds remaining stolen but foul now here's the Walker danger on Edwards a lot of people and you'll hear this controversy should we foul them and put them on the line so they can't tie give them a chance for two the dilemma the size of Georgetown there is nobody quicker in the country on a missed free throw to the ball than Alonzo Mourning he's got Williams an inexperienced freshman trying to check him with a smaller Gladden so if he makes one Maurice Brantley in for size, rebounding purposes, replacing the smaller Gladden, who's only six feet. And David Edwards at the free throw line, a 71% free throw shooter. Miss Morning with the tap, misses. And Morning fouls, and that should be all for Alonzo Morning. Brantley, a 6'6 freshman at the free throw line, only a 61% free throw shooter with six seconds remaining and a three-point Xavier lead. Nobody down to pressure if he happens to miss. They've got a chance to get another but three. Double. Up to Edwards. Foul with two seconds remaining. Now here's the situation, James. Make the first. Missed. Obviously missed the second with a soft touch. Unfortunately, morning not in the game, but you got Mutombo and John pondering on the sideline exactly. Now he's going to tell or direct Mark Tillman as for what the Edwards what Edwards exactly should do. Then it's obvious that Edwards ought to miss attempt to miss to the side of Mutombo. Uh, Allen, they're going for to be on the other side. So he probably takes Stoudemire out. And that's exactly what happens. But still, you would miss to the side of Mutombo. Or, or uh, in, in the front, if you could. You know what I mean? You usually pick a side. It's over. Xavier knocks off the three seed, Georgetown. Well, the top three seeds from the Midwest have been eliminated. Oklahoma, Purdue, and Georgetown out. Arkansas, the four seed, the highest one left in the Midwest. Look at Loyola Marymount. Let's go back to Long Beach now. Greg Gumbel and Quinn Buckner for the finish there. Get him! Those of you who have been watching action elsewhere, welcome back to Long Beach, California, where Loyola Marymount is leading 124 to 96, and it has been another outstanding display of explosive offense. Jeff Pryor, three-pointer. <laughs> they just don't quit. Oh, they rain three-pointers. 
There's a whistle in the backcourt as Ramil Robinson is fouled. Eight three-pointers for Jeff Fryer. His 32 points have been pushing Loyola Marymount. He scored 42 points off of 22 Michigan turnovers. Well, you know, the, the reason that that's happened, Greg, is that this tempo is really tough to stop, and Michigan got caught up in it. And I said it to you last night, I thought that was going to be a problem for Michigan because you, these young men from Michigan have played this way as they've grown up all of their lives. And Steve Fisher wanted to try to tell them, we need successful breaks. If we have a good one, we take it. If we don't, we've got to bring the ball back out. And I don't think Michigan has done a very good job of bringing it back out. Therefore, the Temple has favored Loyola Marymount. Jerry Mills looking for a way into this game. Meanwhile, Romeo Robinson, 20 points, 8 assists, 21 points. And now Mills will come into the game. He'll replace Loy Vaught. You got to think Steve Fisher has been shuffling his big men as often as he can to give them some rest. Here comes Walker. Good. Peabody foul. And Peabody will go to the line. You see it. An NCAA record. <laughs> 127 points. Oh, but this this is the one that I was I was most curious about. If you Loyola Marymount scores 124 points, Golden State leads the NBA with 116. Now the, the real key here is that Loyola Marymount gets their 124 points in 40 minutes as compared to 48 for the NBA. That's incredible numbers for Paul Westhead's Lions. And they're continuing to add up. They don't stop shooting the basketball. They, it, that's what he's all telling them. Hey, guys, get it down here. Get 100 shots up. We'll win the game. And a timeout is called as Tom Peabody hits two. And look at the Lions bench. Giants step indeed to be able to knock off the defending national champion. And they are in position to do that with 5.46 to play in the game. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner here in Long Beach, California, and it has just been another awesome display by Paul Westhead's Loyola Marymount Lions. Almost five and a half minutes to play, and welcome those of you who have seen Xavier of Ohio knock off Georgetown in Indianapolis and move on to Dallas, Texas, here at Loyola Marymount all over the defending national champions from the University of Michigan. And they continue to pour it on. Terrell Lowry with the miss there, but it has been Loyola Marymount's fast-paced attack. The Wolverines haven't been able to keep up. Well, that's, that's it in a, a nutshell, Greg. It's just been tempo, tempo, tempo. That tempo has been up and down. Loyola Marymount averaging 124 points. It does it better than anybody else in college basketball. Perhaps the best-known story in the country the loss of Hank Gathers, who passed away earlier this month, and Loyola Marymount devoting every second of every game to his memory. Now, this is a change. Loyola Marymount is going into a mile for quarter. <laughs> and now Paul Westhead says go after it with 10 seconds on the shot clock. And there's a foul. Turnovers have been the downfall of Michigan today, and Loyola Marymount has taken advantage. 42 points off of turnovers, and of course, the Lions hit their three-pointers. Well, they've been hitting their three-pointers, but they've been creating opportunities for those three-pointers by the fact that they had full-court pressure. This young man here, Tom Peabody, has come up with turnovers. He's created turnovers played a great all-around game but they as I said they've been able to get superior effort from everybody on their team to make up for whatever loss they have in rebounding and scoring points meanwhile Pierce Steamer has left the game with 21 points Terry Mills out Loy bought in for the Wolverines
And Tom Peabody out of the game now. Jeff Fryer comes in. And Peabody gets a well-deserved reception on the Loyola bench. Higgins, three-pointer, nails it. Well, if anybody can stick it on, on Michigan's team, it's Sean Higgins. But as I said, at this point, you get the tempo. If you want it up, then you move it back into Loyola's game. And Loyola is just going to let some of the air out of the ball. They want to just use the time off the clock. Outside, Fryer for three. That's how you use time off the clock, right? <laughs> if it's not time off the clock, it's points on the board. Nine out of 13 from three-point land for Jeff Fryer and 35 points today. Colbert inside for two. But a three-for-two exchange will not get you back even with Loyola Marymount. Meanwhile, Michigan over the 100-point mark for the seventh time this season. Under three and a half to play. There's a traveling violation. We have three minutes, 14 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Here in Long Beach, California, the Long Beach Arena has been alive from the start as the Loyola Marymount Lions have pounded it again and again and lead it 134 to 103. You gotta call the bank when you shoot that one. You, you can't be over there banking the shot from over there. You know, the thing that I, I was really curious about with Loyola Marymount, and it's going to be paramount for them to do, uh, regardless of their opponent uh, for the next game, is how do they handle playing against such superior height? And they just try to take advantage of it with their strongest suit, which is the uh, speed. And that official's trying to get this, find out whether this was goaltending, because Ramil Robinson came from nowhere. Bo Kimball wants the two. He's not going to get it, but he will get two free throws. Mo Kimball always wants two, at least two, if not three. <laughs> Sean Higgins, meanwhile, drew his fourth. Mo Kimball at the free throw line, shooting two. Mo Kimball, 33 points, eight rebounds. You get help from people like Jeff Fryer, Paul Westhead's lines have, have been able to get Bo his shots. Uh, Fryer's got his, Peabody's made his. That just loosens it up for everybody else. But I'll tell you what was really one of the, the good telltale signs for the Lions was when Paris Steamer hits that long shot. Now it brings everybody away from the basket. Robinson takes it to the hoop. 23 for Romeo Robinson. That was not an easy shot. And this is, as you said, not typical of Loyola Marymount. Fryer. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> that is typical. <laughs> but you're right, the spread offense is not. 38 points for Fryer, 10 of 14 from behind the three-point line. Long bomb by Colbert doesn't fall. And inside for Bach. Well, if you're wondering why Michigan doesn't try to call timeout, first of all, it's a substantial lead. The others, they only have one timeout. It's pretty hard for them to really do anything. By going into the next game, got to combat height again. Loyola Marymount, what are they going to do? Lowry drives the baseline, but the reverse doesn't fall. Minute and a half to play. As Tony Colbert slides in for two. And as I said, what is Loyola Marymount going to do? I asked <laughs> Paul Westhead that before, and he said the same thing we always do. 41 for Jeff Fryer. And Fryer stepped back behind the three-point line for that last one. Let's see if they try to get Jeff Fryer another. He's 11 for 15 from three-point land. He's put a show on here, Greg.
45 seconds. Kimball scores. Colbert inside for two for Michigan. Under half a minute now. <laughs> Think about Loyola Marymount. It's a little hard to throttle that engine down. They're so used to going so fast. And mass substitutions will probably take place here. Jeff Fryer getting the hero's welcome as well he should. bunch of lions or what it really is and what you see there is focused emotion they're putting their emotions in the right place got to focus on what they're trying to get accomplished they came out and we'll just flat out got it done today coming up tonight here on cbs of course sunday night means 60 minutes followed by a murder she wrote and then the cbs sunday movie gunsmoke the last apache and it would appear Loyola Marymount is taking a few scalps here and there. It's interesting. I looked at one of the, the assistant coaches for Loyola Marymount, and he's telling Bo, trying to give Bo the shooting stroke, like Bo needs help shooting a basketball or something. <laughs> There's a running joke going back and forth between Bo and the bench. 37 for Kimball. That man in the screen, both of those guys played outstanding game. Both Tom Peabody and Jeff Fryer just played great games. Scored, did everything they needed to do. There's a whistle on the play. Bye, Bo. He just fouled out. <laughs> leading scorer 37 points eight rebounds he has done his part here today wants to win for Hank Gathers more than Bo Kimball. Michael Talley with, his, with the foul. Excuse me. Yeah, I was just going to say Steve Fisher's, you know, looking up. He's, he's disappointed, I'm sure. His crew played well. But once they got out into that, that full court up and down game, it's just so difficult to play Loyola Marymount at that game because the, the thing Steve thought was that it was going to be rebounds. Well, yeah, rebounds are, are going to be a, an issue, but if the re that's if the rebounds come within the reach of your players. When they start to be long rebounds, now quickness takes hold, and there was no question Loyola Marymount just had too much quickness. And make no mistake about it, they have beaten a good ball club here today. Oh, the University of Michigan. Well, you got a count on it. Marcellus Lee, a three-pointer! <laughs> Two seconds, one second. It has been an amazing display. Amazing display. And Loyola Marymount now qualifies to move on to the Western Regions with a 149-115 victory. From the West Region in Long Beach, our final score, Loyola Marymount 149, Michigan 115.
They now join the Battle of Las Vegas and Ball State in the West Region semifinals in Oakland, California, beginning Thursday night. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game for Loyola Marymount, Jeff Fryer, and Rumiel Robinson for the University of Michigan. For Quinn Buckner, I'm Greg Gumbel. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA championship.